The Denver Gazette is counting down the top 10 stories, sports stories of 2023, and we are at number nine, which is all about the Colorado golf scene. So I am joined by Denver Gazette sports editor Paul Klee. And Paul, I think the biggest golf story of this year is that you and I got to play TPC Colorado in September. <laughs> I agree. Uh or, you know, the time that we played Cherry Hills, which was pretty nice, too. <laughs> yeah, we've lucked out. We've gotten to go to some pretty nice courses. And, uh, yeah, my Cherry Hills experience was pretty rough. They uh, That course beat me up pretty good. But um, It's been known to do that. Yeah, it it, it, it it frustrated me so much that I went to start taking lessons. So there you go. Like That <laughs> was pretty much my determining factor. Anyway, not about enough about my game. But the actual story, uh, one of the stories, I think, was definitely Dem Denver's Wyndham Clark winning the U.S. Open at LACC. Um, it was an amazing event to watch him, you know, climb to the top. He beat Roy McIlroy. He beat Ricky Fowler. He beat Scotty Scheffler on that Sunday. I got a chance to talk to Wyndham. You talk to a lot of people around Wyndham. You know, what it is, what is it about Wyndham? Like, he really, this rise to the top is pretty amazing. It was, and and um, I think it's 12 years now since I came back home to Denver. Um, this was one of my favorite stories that we've, you know, been afforded the opportunity to cover because we don't have many of these. And, and you know, golf nuts like you and I, um, we love writing about and telling these local golf stories. And he is really a local golf story. This is a Denver guy that was born and raised here. Um Great player at Valor on, you know, a Valor program that I think won five state titles in eight years. Um, one team had seven division one or division two players. Um, and so it was it was so enjoyable to connect with not only Wyndham like you did, um, but I think I talked to 15 people that grew up with him, coached him, taught him, traveled with him, competed against him. And what was so interesting about hearing from them is, is a lot of their stories were similar that he has a, he has a presence about him to the point that all these folks remembered the first time they met him. And, you know, like his, his uh, Bible teacher at Valor, he remembered when freshman high school, freshman Wyndham Clark shook his hand outside the science room and said, Hey, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, I think Kettler, I'm going to be gone a lot to play golf. So I'll still keep up on my schoolwork, but he remembers these things and they still keep in touch every week. So I think because he is a Denver guy who's very proud and closely connected to his Denver roots made that win. And that year, I mean, shoot, the guy made almost six, 16 million on the tour yeah. this year. You know, he was a top 10 world player. He was third on the FedEx FedEx list. Um, this wasn't like he got hot in the back nine and won a tournament. This is a top 10 caliber in the world type player that finally got past some mental hurdles through the help of um, a, a coach, really a sports psychologist. And she set him on a path that this isn't going to be the last that we hear of Wyndham Clark. Well, no, because, you know, he won Wells Fargo before the u.s open to put himself kind of on the map he was always kind of lingering around the top 10 top 20 yep. i don't think people knew a lot about him and people don't know a lot about colorado golfers and he just kind of burst on the scene you know you talked about how when people meet him he has a presence i even felt that talking to him on the phone mm -hmm. I, I talked to him after wells fargo and he his confidence is just through the roof and he was like i knew this was coming i just had to get there and i talked to him after the u.s open and it was the same thing. And then he also, I remember him going on Sports Center, and he won the U.S. Open right after the Nuggets won the title. And he gave a shout out to the Denver Nuggets because he knew Denver is home. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great segue too. That this this was interesting. I think golfers will appreciate this. Um, his first coach, uh, teacher, I should say, was Eric Billinger, who is a name that you know a lot of Colorado golfers will be familiar with. I'm familiar with him because he smoked me in the 1997 state <laughs> match play championship in the semifinals. He beat me at Bear Creek like a drum. Um, but he was a coach at DU. He met Wyndham at the Highlands Ranch DU golf course uh, before it was a DU course, I guess, when Eric was an instructor there. And Wyndham was like, I want to say like eight years old. And he asked if he could play nine holes with Eric. And Eric is a phenomenal teacher, great instructor. He's not at DU anymore. 
But what he was saying, I said, why did you identify uh, Wyndham as a guy that you wanted to work with? You know, I don't, they don't work together anymore, but they still talk. And he worked with them all through the um, Oklahoma State years, through the Oregon years, through high school, certainly. It was because he was an athlete. Eric looked for athletes, not just guys that play golf. And Wyndham was a, a really good high school basketball player at, at Valor. Um, and he hit this big power fade. Yes. You know, he looked, he liked to identify guys that hit a big power fade. You can control it. Um, hits the ball a long ways. Long way. <laughs> and yeah, he hits the ball a long ways. He's got a very, his swing, it's, I wouldn't say compact, but it's a swing that it doesn't look like a back injury is going to be a problem. Knock on wood, God forbid. It, it's so easy for him. It's a very easy swing. The game is very easy for him. Um, it, like I said, the mental health, the mental stuff was what he had to get past closing out tournaments like you were talking about. And also he would spend four hours on five foot putts, you know, when he was a kid. So he's obsessed with the game and you combine that with the God given talent and the ability. And now that he's overcome that hurdle of winning, you know, a major, like he did, um, I just I think he's going to be a guy that sticks around for a very long time. And it's been a while since we had one of those here. You know, yeah. um, Kevin Stadler was a really good player. Uh, Brant Joe was a really good player. We've had we've had Hale Irwin, of course, um, but we don't get a lot of them that get to that level. And the fact that he embraces his Denver roots, I think, is special. Well, one other uh, Mark Hubbard right now is doing well on the on the PGA Tour That's as right. well as another Denver guy. Uh, he's you know, he hasn't won anything big, but he's right there. You know, Wyndham played on the Ryder Cup team, which was great, mm -hmm. too. So there was a little bit of international exposure. Now I want to flip gears, though, to the USAM that was at Cherry Hills this summer. Uh, you and I both got to go out there multiple days. Mm -hmm. Nick Dunlap was the winner, and he was just great. But talk about the atmosphere out there was just amazing. And it really shows that Colorado loves golf. It does. It's undervalued. And, and I understand why – you know, the, the tour has not made this a consistent stop since the international, and that's not going to change. Um, the weather in that time of year, it has to be in August or usually has to be in August. Um, doesn't cooperate because we get the afternoon storms, that sort of thing. But what they're trying to do when I say they, it's the golf power brokers that exist. And a lot of them are involved with Cherry Hills Country Club um, are trying to get something every three to four years. So we had the BMW a few years back, which was outstanding i mean the attendance was phenomenal we're going to get the bmw next year castle pines in august uh which will sell out again because it always yep. does so if you get one three or four years then it kind of you know it it kind of scratches that itch i guess and people show up so with the usam i compared the attendance at new jersey last year to the usam cherry hills drew three times as many people oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> triple the attendance numbers uh, why is that? You know, we had McDermott Dillon from CU in the event. We had some local guys. We had Hunter um, Jones from CSU. Hunter Jones, who's whew, boy, can he play? Yep. Um, you know, we had some guys, but it wasn't like an overwhelming Colorado centric event. It was it was national guys. It was top five amateurs. It was top twenty amateurs, um, international players. But the attendance was extraordinary, and and the. The ultimate moment that week was the shot on 17, you know, when he sticks a sand wedge to yep. two feet. Um, and it was a scene like it was like straight out of 10 cup. You know, the gallery is in the in the fairway and he's given high fives to strangers and his caddy can't make his way to the green. His caddy is a high school buddy who was at a family reunion in Beaver Creek. Yep. And his normal caddy had to take off because he was involved in, in a wedding or something. So the kid comes down from Beaver Creek and he's weaving through the crowd on 17, the Island green, Chris, it was as much fun as you can have covering sports, man. And it was, um, and the golf course. I mean, the golf course yeah. is the champion of that week because it's, that's as good as it gets. Well, um, so. shout out to Colin Prater as well. Uh, Colin Prater, there you go. Um, science teacher down on the Springs. Um, Doherty, yeah. Doherty, yeah. Uh, C uh, CGA Player of the Year. He had a great like amateur career that uh, year this year. Uh, he was in the round of sixty four. He had a classic match. He lost in the first round, but I think it went twenty two holes. Mm -hmm. He had a classic match. But you know, Dunlap is a star, and oh. he 
I mean, he, he beat Gordon Sargent in the first round, who people think is the top amateur in the world. Right. He beat Connor Jones, the local kid. And then he beat Neil Shipley, who was like the talk of the tournament. Like he, his run was pretty remarkable. It was. Yeah, he had the big hair. Um, yeah. Looked like he was going to a tailgate at Ole Miss in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, he was an Ohio State guy, but he transferred maybe uh, VCU, something like that. Yeah, like, I can't remember, but yeah, it was something. James Madison, like maybe. Yeah. Um, but he goes to Ohio State, and he's a star. He's hits the ball a ton. Um, he was kind of the fan favorite of the week. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that was it. Was unforgettable, man. The, and I had never covered or attended a USAM before. I either. Um, it felt like a college. It felt like an NCAA championship, but bigger than that. And uh, the kid from Alabama, like you said, Dunlap, uh, he's going to be playing Saturday on Saturdays and Sundays oh, yeah. very soon. He is really talented. The story that you did, I want to talk about that from the 2012 USAM yeah. and all the names that were involved in that one. So I did some research on the last time the USAM was at Cherry Hills, and it was won by a guy named Stephen Fox, who played at the University of Chattanooga. Um, he was the 63rd seed going in to match play. The names at that tournament, uh, Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, Xander Schauffler, Bryson DeChambeau, um, who, uh, Hideki Matsuyama was in the field. Um, uh, Corey Connors, who's a good Canadian player, was in that field. It was just an unbelievable field. And um, the guy who came in second place, who, who lost to Fox, Michael Weaver, beat Justin Thomas in the semis, I believe. And I got to talk to both of those guys that were in the finals. And they, they raved about Cherry Hills, of course. And they just talk about the excitement of that tournament. And, and then going to witness it this year, it, it's everything people say it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a major. It's a major. Um, here's one thing. So. The CEO, I think the CEO or the president of Cherry Hills, um, name escapes me right now, but we had we had a long conversation one day and I wanted to know, is this a place that ultimately could, you know, handle another open or another PGA championship? Yeah. And I'd love to get your opinion. Um, and the big question there, of course, is how long these guys are and yeah. if, if they would just eat it up, you know, if they're driving par fours, if they're hitting sand wedge into every par four. Um I went into it thinking they would do that, that there would be, you'd see 18, 20 under in a PGA and people don't want to see that. And the PGA doesn't want to see that. I'm not so sure. I'm not convinced of that because these, and I call them kids because we're old, Chris, but I can call, you know, 19 year olds kids. These kids are so long. Yeah, It was like, it was 25 years ago that I was doing not what they're doing, but I was, I was playing college golf. It wasn't like that. This is a whole different game that these guys are playing. And I'd like to get your opinion with the, with the tour guys, are they shooting 64, 65 at, at Cherry Hills? So I'm going to tie in the corn Ferry tour event at TPC Colorado into this, because I went to the final round of that and those corn Ferry guys destroyed that course. It, it was 350 and then sandwich into par fours. <laughs> now, the rough out there is not like Cherry Hills rough, and I don't think the greens are like Cherry Hills greens. But I'm going to be interested to see how, because the best names in golf will be at Castle Pines in 24, mm -hmm. to see how that goes. I think Cherry Hills could host a U.S. Open because they'd grow the rough, and if guys missed, mm -hmm. it would be a penalty. Like, it, it would hurt them. And, and I think, I mean... Putting on those greens, personally, it was a nightmare. Like, it, it was tough. And I think that's where they get guys is, you know, we saw the you, the women play at Cherry Hills uh, 09. Was that right? Yeah. And I don't – what was the – the winning score was not that much under par. It may have been over par, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Now, the game has changed a lot since 09. But, um, yeah, I think Cherry Hills would find a way to trick things up and the and shout out to the USGA, they were great that week for us. Um, I think they'd find a way to make it tough on guys. I think they would. And if we got a US Open here or a PGA Open or PGA Championship here, I know I'd be thrilled. Well, he did tell me, um, and we reported it that they are trying. Yeah, they're trying. And the issue is, it takes it takes two. You know, yeah. they have to commit to that, and it would be down the road because they schedule things out so far. Um, I changed my opinion. 
uh, seeing how difficult the greens are, yep. how tough the rough is. Um, and, you know, it was nice having Peyton Manning out there. Yep. The Walked right next to him during the final April. The ambassador, April. you know, he's got a lot of things going on. He was out there for that. Um, so I don't know. I hope we see it. I hope we see it in our lifetime, man, because I, that golf course, it has changed tremendously since, you know, the 92, 93 senior open when yep. Jack won it. Um, it has changed tremendously because they've incorporated the Creek so much more, the water comes into play so yes. much more. It's so more, much more prominent, but it hadn't gotten any easier and it hasn't gotten that much longer. So if you can make it tougher, because you're in a pretty confined space there yes, yeah. in a very wealthy part of America uh, that you and I will never belong to. <laughs> um, I just would like to see it. I would like to see that golf course host those guys in a true major, like an open. Yeah, it would be, it would be spectacular. And I think that Cherry Hills is a, the place here that, that could host something like that. Um, you know, they've branched out in the U S open, you know, going to LACC last year, you know, that was the first time. Um, and Wyndham won at 10 under, I think. So, and that, and I'll be honest, from watching LACC on TV, that was a lot more wide open than Cherry Hills is. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. It, it looks that way. Um, it looked that way on television. And I can't imagine, well, I have to look at the numbers, but it's at sea level. Yep. That's a big difference. Uh, these guys just hit so far. Um, it'd be a great case study. Like, how hard can you make a golf course when you have a – finite amount of um yardage because you really do there you can't put the t's back any further than they are no no and i mean and i don't know if it would be a case where they just grow the rough up really high and so like i said guys miss and they're chopping out of god knows what um before we go i do want to give a quick shout out uh colorado's jennifer cupcho on the lpga tour she didn't win this year but she was on the solheim cup again uh they both u.s teams lost this year so that wasn't great, but she'll be on the team again this year. They're playing back-to-back -back years because they skipped a year or something like that. So shout out to her. And also a shout out to the Corn Ferry Tour and TPC Colorado one more time. Uh, they were great hosts. Um, that's our one professional tournament. They won tournament of the year from the Corn Ferry Tour this year. So they're great up there. Um, so, Paul, well, um, before we go, well, any else, anything else you want to chime in on golf? Yeah, real quick. I think that, um, and you've done a phenomenal job of writing about it. Nobody else in Colorado is writing about this. I mean, we have a golf insider every Thursday during the season, um, wildly popular. And I, I remember days growing up here with the Rocky specifically, um, the golf coverage, you know, and I would, that's the first thing I would turn to. So the Denver Gazette is very, very, and this isn't just a plug for us, but it's very dedicated to golf coverage. People are fanatical about golf in Colorado. We grew up with it, Chris. Yeah. And so here's the one thing that I'm looking forward to next year. The college golf scene right now. Yes. yes. Roy Edwards up at, at CU. Um, CSU has some guys, like some really good players. Um, those two being NCAA finalists, um, rare, very rare. Could see it happening. Um they're talented. They're recruiting the right guys. They're recruiting the right kids. They hit it so far. It makes me feel old, but we're going to uh, cover the heck out of those this coming year because I love college golf and it's under, it's underrepresented in, in media circles. Uh, and the CU women, uh, their coach Kelly retired this year. She's been there for a long time. Her assistant is taking over. They have Morgan Miller who broke the CU record for rounds in 60 during the fall season. She's really good. And then uh, shout out to Yannick Paul, too, CU golfer. Played on the DP World Tour, uh, won on the DP World Tour this year. Uh, I had a chance to talk to him early in the season. He was a, he was great to talk to. His brother plays on the Corn Ferry Tour. His twin brother plays on the Corn Ferry Tour. He almost made the Ryder Cup team as well. He just missed out. So, yeah, golf's in a great spot, uh, and it's, it's exciting. And I appreciate the kind words about the insider. Probably come back first of the year, tracking down some stories. Um, real quick, Air Force golf as well right like two guys you know, with cards uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh tom whitney whitney made the uh was, got his tour card on the corn ferry tour so he's playing uh and then kyle is it western westmoreland westmoreland, westmoreland. I mm -hmm. he is playing at q school actually as we record this with a chance to get his card so uh air force could have two guys on tour and that and that's amazing in itself 
tell we got to tell i did text troy calhoun i said uh, air force is a golf school now coach <laughs> I'm sure he appreciated that. All right. He's a fan. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Paul. Thanks for taking the time to talk golf with me. Um, go to denvergazette.com slash sports to see this countdown. Uh, we're posting stories leading up to the end of the year with short videos and just a breakdown of all of our coverage. So, Paul, thanks again for coming on, and we will talk to you soon. Right on, Chris. Thank you. Thank you.